All right, I'd like to call this meeting of the West Dallas West Milwaukee School District to order, please. If we could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. And Ms. Justin, would you please lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, Suzette, can we do the roll, please? This is Justa. Here. Ms. Kluge. Here. Mr. Eustra. Here. Mr. Bailey. Present. Mr. Keller. Here. Mr. Lee. Here. Mr. Schultz. Present. Mr. Sikich is excused. And President Evans. Here. Uh, proper notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the open meeting laws of the state of Wisconsin. Do we have any additions or modifications to tonight's agenda? I have no changes. Board members? No. Okay. We will then move on to item six, our public comments for this evening. There is no uh, written public comments. So we'll then go on to item seven, the superintendent's report. Dr. Laxman. Great. Um, thank you. We'll start with 7.1, the report from West Dallas Central High School student representatives. Good evening. I'm Cody Nelson. And I'm Mackenzie Gordon. And we've got your March update for Central tonight. With our athletic update, as our winter sports wrap up, we would like to congratulate all of our student athletes on their great seasons, some of which are not over yet. The boys basketball team has advanced to the sectional round of playoffs and will take on Kenosha Tremper at 7 p.m. on Thursday at Racing Park High School. Wrestler Amir Blevis qualified for state individual wrestling tournament and placed fifth overall in his weight class. Congratulations on a successful season to Amir and all of our wrestling student athletes. Central's bowling team also made it to the state bowling tournament, which took place last weekend. The team automatically qualified for state this year with a record of 15 and one. Overall, the team completed what competed well and earned an eighth place finish. The girls WWF state wrestling tournament also took place last weekend and Lola O'Brien took sixth place. Joette Casa took third place and Amaya Seraphone was a first place finisher. Congratulations to all of our winter sports teams including girls basketball, boys swim and dive, gymnastics and girls hockey. Looking ahead, the spring sports are all getting ready for their seasons to begin. Track, softball, baseball, girls soccer and golf all begin this month and we hope for good weather so these teams can get off to a great start this season. Please consider supporting our student athletes by attending their games or meets this season. Thank you for your continued support of all Bulldog athletes. ACT, on Tuesday, March 3rd, all of the Central Juniors took the statewide ACT test. With more than 98% of the students attending, we are proud of the number of students who came and did their best that day. The ACT test students on their knowledge of math, science, English, and reading, and it impacts students in multiple ways. In the weeks and months leading up to the ACT, teachers helped students prepare by doing practice questions, giving advice, and holding a practice ACT in January. Black History Month door decorating. During the month of February, teachers and students decorated their classroom doors to celebrate Black History Month and the many contributions of African Americans throughout his the American history. This culminate, culminated a competition in which schools and district leaders judged the best doors. Stay tuned to find out the winners of the competition next week. In addition, the second family night of a gathering promoting unity and equity will take place today at 6 p.m. in the auditorium. Senior prom. Tuesday, members of the Interact Club and NHS joined Mr. Owens and Ms. Hansen to volunteer at Heritage Senior Living for their new senior prom. This event gives senior citizens a chance to enjoy a night of fun with food, dancing, and live music. Our students went above and beyond in their care for our community members, exhibiting true compassion as they brighten the days of all the residents. We look forward to growing our partnership with Heritage, with Heritage Seniors. Last Thursday, Central's Special Education Department held its annual Parent Resources Night. The goal of the event is to assist students in gaining information about resources that can help them be successful in their futures beyond Central. Nearly two dozen community agencies participated, including the Recreation Department, the Milwaukee Co County Transit System, Social Security, and Career Resources. Family always find this event to be helpful in the planning for the future of their special education students at Central. Central Advanced Auto students made their way downtown to the Wisconsin Center today to support classmates Bo Casa and Scott Rennert as they competed on various autom automotive skill tests. 
Chosen from hundreds of students based on test scores, the two have a chance to compete at the New York Auto Show and learn and earn scholarships if they do well enough today. Good luck to the, both of those students and shout out to Mr. Kern for leaving them, leaning them, leading <laughs> them. <laughs> Over the past two weeks, Ms. McKenna's health career students learned about infectious diseases and how to stop them from spreading. To give students choice, Ms. McKenna gave small groups of students the options to choose an infectious disease to research and present in a science fair format. Diseases that students choose to research include HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, and many more. The students researched using scholarly databases and presented the information they found about their diseases to other staff and students at Central. Both students and staff appreci appreciated learning more about these well-known diseases. Finally, we would like to congratulate Ms. Carrie Hansen for being selected as the Herb Coles Foundation Teacher Fellow. With teachers from all over the state applying, it is truly an honor to be selected. She also won a $6,000 award for our school, which she hopes we can use towards service learning opportunities. Way to go to Ms. Hansen. And now here's what's coming up at Central this month. March Madness on Friday, March 27th, Central will hold its annual March Madness basketball tournament with student teams facing off against each other in an effort to win, to win it all. In the week leading up to the tournament, there are competitions like Papa Shot held during lunches and preliminaries of the three-point and dunking competitions. The event always concludes at the end of the day, Friday, with gir winning girls and boys team playing the teachers. Band and orchestra concerts are on March 19th at 7 p.m. So Central's band, directed by Mr. Buck, will hold its March concert. The following week on March 24th, Central's orchestra, led by Ms. Unger, will perform its March concert as well. Please consider attending these events to support our talented mu musical students. Solo and ensemble. The musical month of March doesn't end with the concerts. On Saturday, March 28th, Central hosts the district's solo and ensemble competition. During the competition, both instrumental and vocal students perform pieces that they prepared over the last several months with the goal of making it to the state competition later in the spring. Good luck to all of our students who will be performing that weekend. Thank you for your time tonight and for your continued part of Central's activities. We will see you next month with our April update. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the students? Where's yep. the sectional basketball games? Uh, Racine Park. Park. Is that Park? Yep. yep. I That's just wanted to say uh, congratulations to Coach Maloshnik and the team. I mean, that team is phenomenal. So Thank they you. got a chance to win the whole thing, and I, you know, that would be awesome. So okay. I, very exciting. Yep. Thank, you. Thank you. So we won't see you guys till after spring break. So enjoy your break. Thank Rest you. Rest up. <laughs> get ready for the end of the school year and all that fun stuff. So enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. All right, um, we'll go on to 7.2, the legislative update. Um, so on February 26, 2020, Governor Tony Evers vetoed a GOP plan um, to cut taxes and reduce state debt. Evers said he was willing to work on a compromise with Republican lawmakers, saying he would support legislation with an income tax cut and larger rainy day fund payment, but it must include a property tax cut and increased school funding. Um, Wisconsin joins investigation of Juul Labs. Um, this is a bipartisan coalition of 39 states investigating Juul Labs marketing practices and health claims. The Department of Justice will join the multi-state investigation to look into youth targeting in Juul's ads as it, and, it cl and its claims that va vaping is an effective tool to help wean off smoking. And then on March 2nd, 2020, Governor Evers signed um, a number of um, bills into law that impact um, schools. So um, now Wisconsin Act 116 requires newly issued student identification cards to include the contact information for local and national suicide prevention hotlines. So now we're required to um, print that on the back of student IDs. On um, uh, Wisconsin Act 117 creates a school-based mental health consultation pilot program in Ottagamie County to be administered by the Wisconsin De uh, Department of Health Services. And then um, Act 118 makes several changes to statutes <coughs> governing the use of physical restraints and seclusion of students, including it prohibits a, uh, a door to a room or area used for seclusion from having a lock on it. 
adds the prone position to the list of prohibited man maneuvers and techniques used for restraint, specifies that the use of vehicle safety restraints while transporting a student is not a form of the prohibited mechanical restraints, changes the training components for individuals who are allowed to use physical restraint by prioritizing evidence-based techniques shown to prevent or reduce the use of physical restraints, evidence-based instruction related to positive behavior supports and interventions, and, the individual demonstrate, and that the individual demonstrates the ability to identify prohibited techniques in administering physical restraints. It specifies that notification and reporting requirements whenever seclusion or physical restraint is used on a student um, includes when these techniques are used by a covered individual or law enforcement officer and requires the principal to meet with the individual or individuals who use these techniques. Uh, it also requires the school to provide written information to parents within three days of an incident that includes the pupil's name, the date, time, and duration of incident and a description of the pupil's actions before, during, and after the incident. And it also requires a, a child's individualized education program, IEP, team to convene as soon as possible after the first time seclusion or physical restraint is used to review the child's IEP to ensure it is appropriate to the child's needs. And at the federal level, there are no updates <coughs> at this point. Um, and then going on to district recognitions. Um, so at Irving Elementary School, occupational and physical therapist Jill Stam, Stammen um, Trina Pratt, Karen Frost, and Lisa Kopchinski um, took the initiative to create a motor lab for all 4K to second grade students. The motor lab is equipped with movement stations that will enhance strength, endurance, balance, coordination, and integration of primitive reflexes. Deficits in the aforementioned areas can result in difficulty with attention, sensory processing, self-regulation, motor function, and speech and language development. There's a strong relationship between motor and cognitive processes. The research expertise um, and efforts will positively impact Irving students in many ways. And when I was out there last week, they introduced me to it, and I got to watch some students participating. And it is kind of fascinating where kids have a, a, a deficit of not being able to, you know, do this with their hands on the wall. It also ties to a reading gap, which is kind of interesting. So they were demonstrating that, and, and students were doing some work there. Um, the Irving Student Council also raised $380 for the Australian Zoo Wildlife Hospital Bushfire Appeal under the guidance of Christina Martello and Megan Peasley. At Wilson Elementary School, Wilson staff and students raised over $1,600 for the American Heart Association through the Kids Heart Challenge. Ms. Cardwell and Ms. Danhoff organized the program for the Wilson community. And then from Leadership and Learning, special thanks to the student businesses and their advisors who presented at our last Professional Development Day. Uh, at Dotkey High School, Phoenix Graphics, which is a um, teacher company, advised by Angela Wardlow and Phoenix Cafe, advised by Rob Techmeyer. Uh, the Transition Program, a greeting card shop, advised by Jackie Jacoby. At Walker, the Snack Shop, advised by Jenner, Jennifer <coughs> Siskiewski and Jennifer Streeter. Central High School, the Central High School Bookstore, advised by Marnie McCann and Mike Lukomsky. And then at Franklin Elementary School, Y West Alice, Stories of 86th Sixth Street, advised by Corey Schaefer and Beth O'Connor. And then at Hoover Elementary, Team Imagine Coffee Cart, advised by Helena Taylor and Abby Monday. And then from Communication and Community Relations, um, GE Healthcare um, has selected one of, another one of our schools, Jefferson Elementary School, to participate in GE Community Day, which will take place August 19, 2020. So we're expecting over 100 GE volunteers will attend the event at Jefferson and complete a variety of projects that are just kind of in the planning um, phases right now. And then 7.4, just some quick update information items. So there were no public comments on February 24th, our last meeting, so there's no follow-up there. Um, today was kind of a fascinating, busy, interesting day for us. Um, um, for myself and Deidre in particular, and for um, Dotkey and Walker um, schools. So the AASA, so that's the National Superintendents Association, um, was holding a Transformational Leadership Consortium conference here. It actually started um, Sunday. Uh, and today were school visits, so I spent the morning at Pewaukee uh, and, and really got to see um, some of the really interesting work they're doing, particularly at the high school level, where they've got some interesting things kind of worked out that I think we can learn from. Um, and then they spent the afternoon uh, with us. Uh, we were visiting Dotkey, so we, Deidre did a very nice presentation, just kind of building some background knowledge of who we are and the work we're committed to. And then 
Um, they got an opportunity to tour DotKey and interact with students, and um, Deidre said we had a very hard time getting them back corral because they wanted to keep talking to students. We needed to get them to Walker. Um, and the students and teachers at Walker did just a brilliant job. They did a, we did a learner panel with some young kids, um, and, and they were able, it was fascinating. I, I felt like somebody like prepped them, but I know they didn't. But a little guy was able to talk about, I know exactly what math standard I'm on. Um, <laughs> so they pulled the standard things in. One guy talked about deeper learning, a little kid. I was like, wow, this is really starting to get a hold. Uh, and so I, I think they walked, and they were very curious um, about multi-age classrooms, uh, that, that we've done so much work in that area. Uh, and, and, and they asked the kids, and the kids were like, I like it. I, I, you know, the olders, that's how they started talking about, the olders get to help the youngers when the youngers get stuck. Um, and sometimes the youngers that need to go faster because they can get introduced to the olders work. I was like, this is fascinating. So it was, it was a, a good but busy day. Um, this week coming up, we also have another one of our mandatory NEOLA meetings. So we've worked through the 100 series, the 3000, the 4000. Um, and so we're going to keep kind of going back through review and the way we've set this up is each director and I have the set that's the 100s and the bylaws and then the um, next set of administrative policies. We all read them, we get back together where we have questions and make other little adjustments, suggestions and then we're going to start going through the committee process. Um, so it's the aligned committee with these policies and there's a lot. Um, but we're working through it. Um, this week we'll also have uh, the next safety meeting to detail more of our COVID-19, the coronavirus um, planning. Uh, what, what we've been doing is buying as much as we can or as much as available of um, the recommended masks, the hand sanitizer, Clorox wipes, and then just um, this afternoon, um, Steve Eichmann told me that they ordered, and you've seen these uh, on the news, the, these kind of misters that are disinfecting mm -hmm. so we've purchased one of those so if we have to go into a school and really do a um, kind of deep cleaning with it so we'll have that piece of equipment coming in and then um, this past Saturday um, we kicked off youth music and art month um, and it's this is the first year where, where it's all of the displays and the musicians are out in the community and it's I think really fascinating and I pitched it as an idea a while ago to music and art teachers and uh, I didn't know they had just kind of taken off and ran with the thing, and they kind of kept it a secret for me. They wanted this, <laughs> this to be a surprise. So Saturday evening, I went over to Inspiration Studios um, for the, the first launch, because there's a launch at Filippo's, there's gonna be a launch at City Hall. That's, we're not doing a launch at the um, West Dallas Cheese and Sausage Shop, but there's art there. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, th I think it just, it introduces a whole new kind of part of the community to the cool work our kids are doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and in Inspiration Studios, there was not only a gallery of our student art, but there's a professional show in there as well. So our kids and parents got introduced to, you know, a professionally displayed gallery exhibit where, you know, the paintings are selling for $2,300. And kind of, that's kind of a different twist on kind of what we're introducing our kids to. And so I just wanted to thank all the music and art teachers that put all kinds of extra work into this and the students that are performing. Uh, I, when I was, I was standing talking to Mary Pat and we were both like, we had, we were not sure like people would actually come out, um, but they did. Yeah, there were lots of parents coming through and their kids. So it's cool. I'm looking forward to well, Filippo's. I don't know if it's tomorrow night or Wednesday. I forget. Um, but I'll be at that um, that opening um, for sure as well. And that eat. it is. <laughs> You're right. Well, they're they're getting. I'll do a little plug for Filippo's here. Um, if 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 you come for the show and you dine in, you get five dollars off. Oh, um, so. It's kind of cool. And that concludes the superintendent's report. Excellent, thank you. All right, we'll move on to item eight, the board president's report, taking a look at item 8.1, the review of the board calendar. Uh, today is Monday, March 9th, and immediately following this board of education meeting, we do have a workshop on enrollment and staffing and budgeting projections, number one, for 2020 and 2021. Um, next week, Monday, March 16th, starting at 6 p.m., we do have a closed session meeting. Item uh, March 23rd at 6 p.m. We have a regular Board of Education meeting and immediately following that we have a closed session meeting. Spring break is Monday, April 6th through Friday, April 10th. So hope everybody is safe and enjoys their time. Uh, Monday, April 13th, we will reconvene at 6 p.m. Uh, and it's a regular Board of Education meeting. Do any board members have any community events to update? No? All right. Thank you, everybody. 
All right, we will then move on to the consent agenda for the evening. There are three items. Item 9.1, the approval of the minutes from the February 24th, 2020 regular Board of Education meeting. Item 9.2, the employment summary. And item 9.3, the supplementary contracts. Does anyone need anything separated? 9.3. All right, we'll separate out 9.3. We would then look for a motion on 9.1 and 9.2. Move to approve. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Any additional comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? And we have 9.3 sitting out. We would look for a motion on 9.3. Move to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, any additional comments or questions? I'll be abstaining. We have one abstention. Yep. All right, moved and approved with one abstention noted. Any other comments or questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that passes. We will go on to our action items for this evening. Item 10.1, the Technical Excellence Scholarship Recipients. Come on down. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> well, thanks for having me back again for the presentation of the Technical Excellence Scholarships. Um, the, uh, it's a great opportunity for us to recognize students who um, are taking full advantage of the career and technical education offerings we have here in West Dallas, West Milwaukee School District. Um, we've made a considerable effort this year to increase the number of students who are taking advantage of those opportunities and, and we had a nice pool of candidates this year. Um, the, uh, the students that you have in front of you um, really represent uh, very well the, the, some of the best things that are going on in our district um, and uh, several of them are in the youth apprenticeship opportunities through our district and uh, um, some of them have taken on some of the certification opportunities through the MATC, which we've tried to expand. So it's been really a nice opportunity to really see kind of the breadth of what's happened here in the district with uh, career and technical education. Just keep in mind, these students have to go to a technical college in order to get that, uh, the scholarship recipient, or receive the uh, scholarship. And um, if you don't have any questions before I go, I do want to thank uh, Jacob Berkey, uh, from Hale and Nate Rice from Central who were instrumental in, in getting this pool of candidates interested and to apply and uh, so it's, it was really um, an exciting opportunity for me to uh, get to meet with the kids and see who they were and, and as part of that process so are there any questions about um, the technical education scholarship no question, just a comment. I want to thank okay. you for your hard work and dedication. It's awesome to see what's happening. No, thank you very it's much. It's thing. been a real pleasure to be a part of the whole Good. process. So right. It's been well, we have to vote on it yet, so oh, we can't okay. run away quite yet. But um, but it's also neat to see the diversity of the fields that everyone wants Absolutely. to go into, which is great that it's not all in one area, that it's really spread out because of all the different options and people are taking advantage of these programs and yeah. see yeah. ahead, so it's great. Yeah. Uh, if there are any other comments or questions, we'd look for a motion. Move to approve. Second. Second. Moved and seconded by everybody. <laughs> um, any additional comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Great, that passes. Thank That's you again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, then we will move on to item 10.2, <coughs> the strategic plan 2020-2025. Okay, um, over here, we have a short presentation to help us kind of work through this. Um, so the board's aware we've been uh, working on a refreshed version of our strategic plan for a number of months. Um, what we wanted to do this evening is just walk you through a little bit of uh, the process and some of the kind of um, high level pieces. And then a little bit, there's two videos embedded in here that I think um, will help explain some of the language and some of the new commitments we're making in this plan. So you can go ahead to the... So we'll, we'll talk about the process, the mission and vision language and alignment that is, uh, I think, really important in the work. Um, then each of the building blocks will go through, so success in life through college and career readiness. Deidre will kind of talk through that. Employee engagement and culture, that's Jeff. Communication and community relations is Beth. And financial stability and efficiency is Caitlin. 
So in terms of the process, right, this is, um, and, and like we started the original plan, a collaborative process. Um, it involves a good many employees, so teachers, administrators, secretaries, maintenance. Well, we invited lots of folks to be a part of the process. We call that the strategic plan leadership team. It really is a refresh of the current plan, so it's not a wholesale set of changes. Uh, I think the, the most significant changes are really in the success in life area that Deidre will talk about. Um, there were four meetings with facilitation <coughs> by Melissa from Studer. So she helps us build this work. There are iterations of this, uh, and there are iterations of the mission and vision, vision language as, as we got feedback. And um, it was fascinating. I had one version of the vision language, and you know, we captured a lot of feedback on post-its like we uh, normally do. <coughs> and there was language in it that um, like it was the best post-it I've ever gotten in feedback, so I've saved it because it was so funny. This, the feedback was the end of the vision statement sounds like something a used car salesman would say. <laughs> and I was like, oh, we don't want it to sound like that. <laughs> so, so we worked on it some more. Um, so that, and that's why you ask, right? That's why you ask people for feedback. And then we'll walk through the, um, the goal and strategies. And, and they were, those are built in kind of smaller work teams led by each of our directors. So this is just so you kind of see um, the number of people that are involved in some of the names. Uh, that were at the table with us and gave their time to help us rebuild or refresh our plan. So in terms of mission and vision, right, so we're starting to use this tagline, learning that works, and people generally are saying, oh, that makes sense for us, because of that word work and our, the history of our communities. But the, the mission and vision and alignment, so if you think about the language here, and mission is, you know, the, our purpose every day what we're trying to accomplish each day we come um, together with kids. So it really focuses on equity through deeper learning, uh, fosters a sense of belonging, and educates the whole child so that every learner achieves success. So those pieces around equity, deeper learning, belonging, and whole child, right, are the pieces where we really wanted to get alignment uh, between the, the language at, at the kind of board level of mission vision that also supports language that we're even starting to hear kids use, right? So the alignment all the way through the system is really important. In our vision, we kept it really short, um, and, and so it really is about we aspire to create experiences that build community and empower learners in ways that prepare, prepare them ways that prepares them? Prepare them to live life on their own terms. And that language is out of a video that we've used to help define equity. And I so a friend of mine had talked about just equity in general being the existence of difference. But another friend of mine said that when we're providing equity, we're giving kids the ability to live life on their own terms. Mm. Which is to say, we provided the educational opportunities <clears throat> where they could decide what they want to do, rather than having their decisions foreclosed for lack of knowledge. And so when I think of equity, I think of fit. What fits the people that are in my room? Mm. And what can give them the ability to live life on their own terms when they leave me? So I don't want to be the system and the dispenser of knowledge myself. How can I create the conditions for inquiry to occur, to develop the skills they're going to need to be independent from me, so that they can then practice that stuff on their own? I, I'd rather not be like a superstar to them. I'd rather be a Sherpa. You know, I'd rather be the guy that's guiding them through, and then they start to understand, you know what, I can do this. Because you can only know what you can do when you do it independently. Yeah. And so how are we setting up our systems you know, for all of our vulnerable children so they can live life on their own terms? I think that's equity in the, in the best way that I understand it now. So, so we've used that video with teachers. I've shared it in a Sunday Thoughts. Um, and we think that language, um, to live life in their own terms, is, is unique in a school vision statement. It's, it's not the typical, and I think that's something we were striving for. Um, but it's also a, a, then a commitment on our part um, to create all the opportunity and possibilities for kids so that kids don't have doors closed off by the experiences they have with us, they have them open. Um, it's, it's similar to Paulo Freire's work. He wrote a book called The um, Pedagogy of the Oppressed, which is um, very, I think, famous. I mean, he's, a, he's long since passed away. He was a Brazilian educator. 
and he talked about the purpose of education is, is to give kids the ability to engage in the practice of freedom, right? So it's a similar concept as the live life on your own terms. Um, and so that language in the, and then you can't read this, but that language in the mission and vision then also aligns to our belief statements, which we started talking about as equity non-negotiables, right? So they're gonna replace the belief statements and all this language is all gonna get replaced in the coming year. Um, and, and we also work to align then the goals and the targets and the strategies to some of these belief statements, right? If, if these are gonna matter to us, then um, we should really operationalize them. And the, the very last bullet is really about working to increase the diversity and the level of support we provide to um, people that join us from diverse backgrounds. And the second video that's really embedded in Jeff's area, well, it's the same group of people talking, but then talking about, you know, why, why don't we have more black teachers? Um, and so these two videos come from the National State Teachers of the Year. So these are all National State Teachers of the Year from different states, all teachers of color, that produce this video series on short kind of conversations around equity. And so I'll turn it over to Deidre. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, <clears throat> as Marty said, our um, college and career readiness area is the one that took um, a pretty significant shift in the way that the goals and the strategies were written. Um, and that was on purpose. It was lots of that was feedback that we get when we go around and do our community circles around, I need to know that the language and that what we're working on right now with deeper learning and some of our project-based learning is going to be the thing we keep doing. I, we are in a good place, please make sure that's what we keep doing. And my response has been that the board's actually asked us to refresh the strategic plan and part of it is because we are onto something and we're making some nice headway and we want to make a commitment to our employees that that's not going to change anytime soon. Um, so that was really important to the teachers that we spoke to when we went around and did our community circles. It's been really important to some of the students that we've been talking to as we're out and about and doing these learner panels. Um, so it was important to make sure that we shifted how we wrote the goal around some of the work we know is the most important. Um, so the goal no longer has a test score in it, and we've talked about that before. We still have those test scores in the strategies because they are progress monitoring tools to make sure that we're on track with the things that we need to do to provide those windows to be open, those doors to be open for our kids when they leave public school. But really, that it became about success in life through college and career readiness. So that first part of the change in language was one of the most important for us because when we just talk about college and career readiness, it makes the assumption that we start with the idea that everyone's going on to college. And college is amazing, right? And I went to college and the career I chose needed a college degree. So that was a good fit for me. But by saying college and career readiness, it also implies that that's what everyone's pathway should be. And there's a ton of jobs that you can do that would make you perfectly happy that don't require a degree or don't require a four-year college or a two-year college. So we want to be sure that the messaging in that, um, in the tagline, in the top, and the goal really is success in life through college and career readiness, through whatever preparation you need to live life on your own terms. Um, so we shifted so that um, we can be sure that the deeper learning competencies are in there. So it's learners will demonstrate skills in content mastery, communication, collaboration, problem solving, self-direction, and academic mindset through a yearly public demonstration of learning that uses an outside agency as an authentic audience. So that's kind of the first part of it. And for those of you that have been able to come to those public demonstrations of learning when the kids are putting on their learner exhibitions, you've each noted that have been able to be there or when our performers are performing live or, right, those are all public demonstrations of learning. The quality of the product that a student puts out when the, authentic, when the audience is authentic is huge. Um, it really amps up our game as far as what we want kids to be doing. So we wanna make sure that as part of our goal that that is at least a yearly experience for every one of our learners. Um, and we're not there yet. We have about half of our schools that are doing some version of that. And then if kids are in athletics or if kids are in our music programs or if kids are in you know, student council and things like that, then they're getting more of those opportunities. But that really, with an authentic audience, is something that we want to make sure that we're providing for every single learner, that opportunity. Um, and then part of what we want to make sure we're growing is our participation in at least one post-secondary opportunity before graduation. Um, with also a reflection of learning demonstrated by these other things. So the ultimate goal is that 
our kids are starting to take their work public. They're starting to get exposed to a wide variety of things when they're in school. And also that they are able to tell us a little bit more about how they feel in school. So these are the things that we measure in Panorama, which are social awareness. Um, right now, about 57% of our students who take that measure in grades three through 12 are demonstrating a favorable response. And we want that to go up to 80. Um, an increase in grit from 49 to 80. Curiosity, 58 to 80. Growth mindset, 53 to 80. Classroom effort, 67 to 80. Self-regulation, 63 to 80. And then the other couple were really important to the committee that we kept in there, which is to continue to find ways to reduce exclusionary discipline. Um, obviously, if kids aren't in school, they can't, you know, that makes this a challenge. Um, and then an increase in the four-year graduation rate and an increase in the attendance rate. So some of those markers that we know are really important to the work we do are still in there, but the overall shift of the language went from primarily a test score to really, what's the experience we're giving our learners every day? And then how are they telling us that they feel about the development of their skills over time? Any questions for me before we go on to the next one? All right. Jeff, just a second. If you can get the microphone just so that people are watching at home, they can hear you. And Caitlin as well, during her part. Thanks, sorry to interrupt. Yep, is this better? Yeah. So when we're focusing on our employee engagement and culture, the committee work um, and our focus, our goals have pretty much remained consistent. So we're getting a feel for the overall district and where our employees are at. So as a committee, when we were talking about this, we kind of went in the direction our employees are engaged in our schools and our district as active learners and leaders. We develop positive school culture through clear, timely, and transparent communication and form effective relationships. And so our goals that we're going to be working towards are increasing the number of employees that are participating in uh, the surveys. And so getting as much feedback as we can. And I know something that we've talked about, um, it's not only important to get the as many employees participating, but also um, the quality of feedback that's being provided so that we can make sure that we're addressing that. We also want to increase the employee engagement from a score right now of a 3.5 to a four, roughly a, a 4.0 um, out of the scale of one to five. We want to continue focusing on um, decreasing the voluntary staff turnover that we're seeing from year to year. And then probably the biggest piece that Dr. Lexman's working on right now, um, leading the committee work, is implementing a compensation system that ensures that the West Dallas, West Milwaukee School District is um, comparable to other area school districts. And just um, Dr. Lexman mentioned a second video. So the second video that's embedded in the employee engagement and culture um, focuses on increasing the, the diversity of our workforce. And we've had conversations of that um, and one change that, that we're doing is that um, on all of our job descriptions, so there will be a statement, the West Dallas West Milwaukee School District encourages applicants from diverse backgrounds to apply. And so again, getting that message out there in places where previously we haven't addressed that topic. But, um, <clears throat> You know, our kids, our kids, they are the ones who, who need it, who need us. The inequity is baked in the language, right? So mm -hmm. the minute we start talking about things like minority, mm -hmm. like there is nothing minor about me. Mm -hmm. So we have to respect the idea that we are all fully human, fully capable. Yeah. It's obvious and axiomatic. Like we, we, we need to make our schools places where students of color, particularly black children, feel loved, Absolutely. valued, and respected. Absolutely. That's why we don't have black teachers, right? Like yeah. that, that's it. Until we address the miserableness that students of color feel in our school, feel in our schools, like there's no impetus for them to come back and work in them. Correct. Like, why are you going to work in a place where you felt subjugated, marginalized? Like, that's crazy to me. And he would always seem to be harder on me than the other kids in the classroom. And so I looked at him. It was after a time I got in trouble for something. I don't know what it was, but he hounded me and I said, "I hate you," and I was crying. I didn't mean I hate you. What I meant was I love you. <laughs> what I meant was I need you. What I meant was I'm scared because I know that you are going to impact my life in a way that no one else can impact my life because you look like me. In my whole conversation on how to recruit, even as an African-American male uh, teacher, 
I never thought of the experience that I had in school as being detrimental to actually wanting to be a teacher. Because even after I gave my story of my fifth grade teacher who inspired me, not many experiences after that inspired me. But that one was so powerful that I held it for 10 years until I graduated and became a teacher. I've been a teacher for 28 years. 28 years. I was on the news when I first started teaching. And it was because they're like, oh, we need more teachers of color. And so that was 28 years ago. And we're still having the same conversation. If, if you're going to cultivate teachers of color, you have to have supports there so they stay. Right? Because like, if I'm a talented young black male with a degree, degree in mathematics, and I move into you know, insert name of school, and year one, I'm miserable, right, right, right. bounce. Right. Year one, I'm not supported, bounce. Absolutely. Year one, I'm marginalized, bounce. Absolutely. And like, and if I don't, I'm a fool. Mm -hmm. And so we can create new ones, right? But if we don't keep them, and they don't stay, we're right back to square one. Absolutely. Where you're talking about doing this for 28 years now. Like, that's crazy to me, 28 years. And so I think it's really, really key, and that's why courage is key in this thing. Yeah. You know, once you confront somebody, once you racialize feedback, once you say, listen, that's, you just call this female heretical, like, that's a weird thing to say about a female that you wouldn't say about another. We have to be brave, courageous, as you say. Our superintendents have to be courageous and say, okay, we have to do this so that we can go through this ongoing PD. So we, we, have, to, we have to step up and do it. But I want to tell you, I really appreciate that because I had never in a million years associated my experience with not wanting to be a teacher and even having that part as a conversation of recruiting black males, man, I appreciate that. Cool. Jeff, may I ask a question before I move on? So the, the disclaimer or the additional uh, content um, for the job postings, is that a, a trend? Is that something that you're seeing across other school districts in other parts of the state or other areas? Mm -hmm. um, yes, and, and where that um, came from is really our work with CAGC. Okay. So as one of the meetings there, so the Closing Achievement Gap Consortium, and. Um, yeah, Eugene Pitchford is a professor at Concordia, and he was talking to Willie Garrison, right? Willie mm -hmm. Garrison, who's um, director of equity and student services in Wauwatosa, and they were talking with you know this a room full of superintendents about the importance of those kind of statements. That if I'm a, a person of color applying for a job, and if I don't immediately see something that reflects myself back to me from that organization, I'm moving on to the next thing, mm -hmm. right? So it's this. So it's the, a really intentional commitment to diversity, an intentional welcome. And so we, we drafted that statement as a way to just start this kind of um, introduction of our work that may attract more um, teachers of color. Okay. okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, Beth Kaler from the Communications and Community Relations area. Um, this hasn't had too much change from our original <laughs> draft. I just will restate our statement that our learners, family, staff, and community work together to achieve our chair vision and are proud to be part of an innovative, highly engaging school district. The way that we want to measure that is to continue to increase um, the participation in our parent satisfaction survey to increase the overall mean, meaning the level by which people are satisfi satisfied with the district. To increase our social media engagement, we have a baseline there, a baseline number. And to maintain that above average open rate for our materials, particularly our newsletter. And then to decrease the number of resident students who apply for open enrollment out um, of, of the districts. There were 411 applications last year, but to continue to have resident students choose our district um, to attend. Okay, and last but not least, financial stability and efficiency. So our statement here is our school district maintains financial stability while equitably aligning resources to support our district's mission and vision. So some of our goals here are demonstrate financial responsibility through a reduction of annual audit findings by 75%. So at the end of our 17-18 audit, we had 12 findings and our goal is um, three at, by the end of this strategic plan. And the, I would say, average, your goal is really one or two. Um, so I, I definitely think we can get there. I think the three is um, reasonable and I think our stretch goal is one or two. 
increase fund balance to 20% of the general fund, fund 10 budget. So that fund balance of 20% is that mark allows you, um, it's kind of a approximation at this point, but that it should allow you to avoid short-term borrowing so that we know in 1920, sorry, this is 1920, in 2021, we're going up to short-term borrow. And so um, when we can reach this certain percent of our fund balance, that means we can avoid short-term borrowing, which means we save that interest. And that 20% is the general goal. We'll work with our municipal advisors to figure out exactly what that number looks like for us, but the 20% is a, is a great goal for us to achieve. Right now, we're sitting at a little bit of a, above 18%. Improved credit rating from BAA2 to A3 will allow us to have a better um, interest rate when we do borrow. And so that BAA2 right now, um, that are going, going from that up to A3 is five, a five-step increase, which we talked through with municipal advisors and they said that's, that is an achievable goal. And so the, some of the ways that we can get there is a not drawing from fund balance. So that means adding to fund balance or at least maintaining it from year to year. And then having a fund balance policy that states that what percent that our goal is. So that in when we talk through the NEOLA policy is one of the items that we have in there is an, a new policy that says 20% is our goal and now it's gonna be in the strategic plan as well. And then um, another piece of that is timely grant claims which is one of the ways that we can control our our cash in our bank. So we, when we do grant claims on a quarterly basis and especially at the end of the year we're maintaining a timely grant claiming system that increases our credit rating as well. It's one of the components. Another goal that we have is develop and begin implementation of a facilities master plan that includes strategies to create innovative learning spaces and maintain, maintains efficient building operations. So as you know, we've selected a construction management firm and an architectural firm, and we're beginning that process right now, so that's really exciting for us. And then finally, budget accurately to ensure that no more than 2% of the general fund budget is added to fund balance annually. So while we do want to be conservative, we also want to be realistic. And if we are increasing by a few million dollars each year, that doesn't, that money could have gone to kids this year. So we're hoping to be conservative and realistic with our budgeting practices and increase our fund balance by no more than 2% each year going forward. Right, and that really came from part of our budget conversations earlier. Gary's point, so we set that as a target to make sure we don't want to overspend, but we want to use the dollars we have for the kids we're educating each year. Caitlin, I just have <clears throat> just one question, maybe you can clarify it for me. I know that you had mentioned about auditors. It sounded like you're going to decrease the amount of auditors or the, the company that comes in and does the auditing? That's a good question. So this is audit finding. So essentially it's a red flag or a, you know, a check mark on your audit. So okay. the audit findings is so at the end of this, in 17, 18 audit, we have 12. We're still, we're in the final stages of getting our 18, 19 audit back, which is, I mean, it's March. So that's, it's very delayed this year because there was a lot of work to do um, going from that, that year where that we had the 12. So that's just, our goal is to have less red marks on okay. our audit. All right, thank things. you for clarifying mm -hmm. that. Okay, and so that's our strategic plan update work <coughs> questions. I, I do have one question um, regarding equity. So do we have the statement for defining equity? Um, what do we have a statement defining equity and how does it relate to how the Department of Public, uh, Department of Public Instruction defines equity? Um, it's a good one because I'm not familiar with how DPI defines equity. Um, but our, our definition in the shortest um, version is preparing kids to live life on their own terms, right? So an equitable outcome is that every kid has every possibility available to them. Um, when we have achievement gaps, they're, we're sending kids off into the world with limited possibilities, right? So, so that's really the big idea and the big commitment. Um, but I've got to look at what DPI has, maybe. Yeah, and the framework that DPI provides is really that equity is at the center of your continuous improvement work, and equity is at the center of making sure that you have your MTSS work, and it's really about creating outcomes and opportunities for kids that decrease the gaps that we see. And so um, the guidance that, that we've been using from DPI to guide all of our MTSS work is framed around their equity work, and so it's in line with the opportunities that kids are getting by making sure that we're focused around building those skills all the way through. I don't know what their actual language is. language is in that definition, but we've been using those materials for years that are 
framed around continuous improvement and MTSS and providing the right supports and least restrictive environment for all students so that we can ensure that we are creating outcomes for kids that are equitable and opportunities for kids that really do allow them to do whatever they want to do when they're done. Do you approve the draft tonight, or is that? No, this is not a draft anymore. Oh, okay. What you have in front of you, unless you're going to um, suggest changes from the floor. Okay. Um, just make, I just want to make sure we yep. understood what the instruction right. was. We're ready to hopefully get your approval and keep moving forward. Any uh, comments or questions? If not, we look for a motion. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any additional comments or questions? Not all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Um, keep fighting a good fight. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, thank you everybody on your hard work on that and the rest of the team. <coughs> okay, so that uh, concludes the uh, original part of the agenda tonight. So we will take a quick break for uh, and a telecast and then get ready to move into our discussion on financial stability and efficiency. So we're going to take a five minute recess. Thank you.